Hey there guys and welcome back. We got six new cards revealed today. There might be end up being more. I don't think so though since they all got like sort of revealed around the same time. If there is, they'll be in tomorrow's video. But we'll get right into these ones and there'll be uh, links in the descriptions for the people who actually got the card revealed to them. Like they got a special... They're mostly streamers and stuff so they got like a special card to reveal. So I'll leave a link to their video in the description so we can see what they have to say about them and whatnot. For some reason I said it for the other ones, but then I forgot that Muzzle was um, revealed by Merchant and Crow's Eye was revealed by McBeard. So this will probably be somewhere in the beginning, but just wanted to put that out there because I said it for the rest of them and then I forgot for the last two. The first one is Mandrake, which was actually revealed by a Russian YouTuber. So this one is a silver epic. You choose one, heal slash reset a unit and strengthen it or weaken it by six. So it's Mardrum, only it's more powerful and it's a silver now. Um, this card's alright. I think it'll only see play if it sees play in Skellige. Because that's the class faction that you can make use of the strengthening effect by. I mean, yeah, you could like strengthen a unit that's damaged under weather and basically heal it and give it six strength. That'd be the only other thing. Because mostly when people run Mardrum, they use it for the spores effect which is just to reset that unit that's gotten a bunch of power boosted to it. So this one, the fact that it does six additional damage, but take, I mean, three additional damage technically, but takes up a silver slot. Uh, I mean, there's really only one other card that it can hit and delete that Spores can't, and that would be um, Nilfgaard's Nausicaa standard, yeah, Bear, not Enforcer, the Bear, who actually boosts up, because he's originally a six. So yeah, you could delete that with this. It might be alright. I mean, Skellige definitely going to see the most use. Next up, we got Peasant Leader. This one was revealed by Swim. And uh, this one is an 8-power silver. It spawns two 1-strength cows to the left and two 1-strength cows to the right. Basically swarms the field with 5 units all of a sudden. So it's a 12-power card on its own. But when you start running it th with things like Yennefer, Commander's Horn... Stuff like that. It'd get more value quicker. I don't know so much running it just because you run Commander's Horn though. Because you could get a better value off your Commander's Horn. Instead of just having a 12 power card. But if you're running Yennefer and you're using the Unicorn in a Swarm deck. Yeah, that would this would definitely get you some nice value with that. Because you're getting 5 units right away. It's better than the Selenal Harpy who gives you 3 units. And the Golem who actually gives you... Yeah, he gives you four units altogether, and he actually adds up to a 12 power silver because he does one damage to things, and he's ran in some swarm decks. So this card might actually replace the golem since you get one extra unit on it, therefore giving you two more power on your Yennefer unicorn. So this one will probably be a fun card to play around with. I mean, in no Northern Realms, if they're running that six power unit that boosts things by one, then yeah, he's probably going to be ran in that, and that's going to be annoying. They're going to be more, so much more important to kill off the Katawani Siege supporters. Because those guys are going to start getting them crazy value if they have like two of them out, or... Jeez, if they have three of them out and they play a peasant leader. Let's see, they'd get 22 power out of that silver card. That'd be crazy. But next up we got Slizzard, a new consume card. Kind of, all right effect. I mean, it's a three power bronze, rare. Oh, it's a bronze. So yeah, this is actually a really good card. I thought it was a silver, but it's a bronze. So you consume, but without boosting a different unit from your graveyard that has a copy in your deck and play that copy. This card being a bronze with a three power. I mean, you don't even need to run this in a consume deck. It's deck thinning for monsters with a three power unit. So basically you get plus three on whatever card that you want to grab from your deck that you didn't draw into yet. Like say you have a Selenal Harpy in your graveyard, but you want another one. There you go. You can bring it out of your deck. You have, um, the most useful thing actually is for Necker. Because if your Necker gets locked, that's in consumed deck though. If your Necker gets locked, you usually have to want to keep like two in your hand sometimes just in case it gets locked and you don't have an answer to it. Well now, if you run Slizzard, you can just grab it from your graveyard and pull out another Necker from your deck with three more power on it technically because of the three power that you get from the Slizzard. 
Um, and it boosts it by one because you consume, you technically consume the unit, and but you don't boost him by the unit's power, which is fine. That's it's already three power that's deck thinning. Uh, besides that, I don't know, kind of fitting it in a consumed deck. I mean, the Rakus Bahamas already got taken out along with the Rakuses for the most part in most consumed decks, but they are changing Harpy. So, I mean, this might be a good replacement for Harpy because it'd be deck thinning for you, which is really nice. And in other monster decks, I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't want a three power unit that searches out another unit from your deck and gives it three more power, basically. Because even then, like, if you had a Necker Warrior in your graveyard, you could bring out another Necker Warrior, making it a 10 power play. Then you thinned your deck, and your Necker Warrior is not such a slow tempo play anymore. So, Slizzard, I think, will actually see a decent amount of play. Maybe a lot of play. Because, yeah, that's that's really good. Next up, we got the Dal Blathana Swordmaster, which is actually revealed by Lift Coach. Um, on his Twitter, he didn't actually do a video on it. He just posted, made a Twitter post, told the effect and everything. This one is a four power bronze rare. Mostly all the new cards that they come with that are bronze are probably going to be the rare version because they cost a little bit more to craft. But it's agile and when you play it, you damage enemy by the unit's power. Sort of like brain, brain that was a silver five power unit, but this one's a bronze. So this one could be a lot of fun in like a hand boosting Scully Tall deck. Because you got those units that boost a unit in your hand by one every turn. So that'll add up. I mean, unless you're facing like monsters who have low power units. I mean, these things get up to like six or seven. They're, they're 14, 12 power plays. And if you play a Quen sign on them with like Ithilin or something. I mean, yeah, that you'd lose a little bit of tempo there. But then you'd have a six power unit in your hand with a shield. That's going to do six damage when you play it just off that. So... These things might be really good. I mean, Brain was played for a while, but you basically just boosted her up really high and then did a ton of damage to their highest unit. That sort of fell out of play, though. But with it being a bronze and being able to run three, now you can split up the damage more and not have to just dedicate it to, like, one super high ping and hope that they have a unit out that can take that much damage so we actually get the full value out of it. This card, I think, definitely going to be really fun. Dalblathana Swordmaster. I like that one. Then we got... Hey, it's the muzzle. Actually, that Swordmaster 2 and Slizzard and Peasant Leader weren't in the um, unreleased art thing, but these other ones are. We got Muzzle next, which is the one that I was wondering, what the heck is this card going to do? Because it looks like an opposite adrenaline rush, but that's pointless. Then we got, yeah, Muzzle. It's a gold legendary. You move a bronze or silver enemy unit with eight or less power to the opposite row. It's... A 16 value gold if you play it um, while they have an 8 power unit out, which isn't so bad. I mean, if you can't find anything that gives you more than 16 value or isn't dedicated to your type of deck, then yeah, definitely run Muzzle. Muzzle, I think, is going to be pretty good. Not so much for answering things because attacking, having a tech card for a gold slot is... You only get four of them. Like, tech cards are usually bronzes and rare, commons and rares, maybe silvers. But with this one, you can at least get 16 value out of it if you wait to steal an 8 power unit. If you steal a 7 power unit, which shouldn't be too hard either, it'll be a 14 value gold, which still wouldn't be too bad. I think this card will see a decent amount of play. I don't know if it's going to be in every deck, but I think it's really being underplayed if you read them, the comments and merchants video about how they a lot of people seem to think this is a crappy card but hey it is a tech card sort of because i mean the best like situation where you have this card just in case for is like they throw their iris over then you can muzzle it and throw it back at them and then they won't be able to like get that 25 power boost and maybe you'll get the 25 power boost instead but i mean outside of that or it's like stealing yeah like their sages or any of those really annoying units that that faction actually uses to get themselves boosted more and gain themselves value yeah steal any of them but i mean outside of that it's a still a 16 value gold like that's not too bad at all you run karen in some decks and that is a 16 value gold at its best day and i still like that card like i use it for the same reason that i would use muzzle 
Um, I bet Karen like is to in, eat their Imperial Enforcer, and yeah, or any other six power. This thing can go up to eight power. So like sages, sages and Scully Tull and stuff. They're really annoying. I can at least take care of one of them. The thing that's gonna be funny though is if this card ends up being really, really, really good, and everybody ends up running it. Then you're basically they're gonna play their sage. You're gonna muzzle it. They're gonna muzzle it back, and it's gonna be like, okay, we both used one of our golds and we basically passed. But we'll have to wait and see on that. The next one is Crow's Eye, which I didn't really like this art, so I skipped over it pretty quick in that other video. But this one is a bronze rare. It's a special alchemy organic. Damage the highest enemy on each row by four. Increase the damage dealt by one for each copy of this card in your graveyard to a maximum of ten. Now the way this thing is worded makes me think they're coming out with a way to duplicate spells. Like, maybe, like, an operator for spells or something. Because, yeah, you have graveyard hate cards, sure. You have, like, uh, Griffin. Pretty sure monsters would be the only one that would be able to steal three of them. Yeah, because of Griffin. And then you move them into your graveyard. If your opponent's running them, too, that would be give you more damage. But then it says, to a maximum of a ten, which would mean you would need six copies in your graveyard, and then you would need to play one. To have it do 10 damage. So. I don't know how you'd get that 7th spell. Even with Graveyard Hate. Unless they're coming out with a way to copy spells. That's the only thing I can think of. Because even in Scully Toll. When you play the spell with the Sage now. Or the. <laughs> I was saying the Sage before. It's the Farseer. Steal their Farseer with Muzzle by the way. Not their Sage. I don't know why I get them mixed up. But the Sage. When you play that it actually banishes the spell from your graveyard so yeah you wouldn't be able to replay it with six in your graveyard you'd have five again so i don't know about that it's a special alchemy organic so yeah you can't even ethylene it like you can't get two copies in your graveyard with ethylene but that's about it for this video guys uh hope you guys enjoyed if there's any other cards i'll be doing a video on them We'll have to wait and see. These ones so far, out of these ones, I don't care so much about Mandrake. I mean, unless you want to try it in Skalij. Uh Peasant Leader will see some play in Yennefer type decks, I'm guessing. Slizzard's really nice. Dalblathana Swordmaster, really nice. Muzzle. <laughs> it's so iffy because like you gotta give away one of your golds that are dedicated to your deck. If you don't have if you have that iffy gold slot, like the one they usually put Igni in for, maybe muzzle. Maybe, but then you're sacrificing an Igni who can net you way more than 16 value. But you are gaining the ability to be able to take something that's important to them. Uh, muzzle's hard to call, but I think it's going to be pretty good. And then Crow's Eye is alright, it's kind of cool effect. I mean, unless we come out with a way to start duplicating spells, it's alright. If you come out with a way to start duplicating spells, a Crow's Eye deck would be really fun, I think, because, yeah, getting it up to a maximum of 10 damage, damage the highest unit on each row by 10. Problem is, once you play your first one, they're going to start row stacking, so you're going to need something like a Lacerate, too, for when they start row stacking, so we can get major value out of that Lacerate. Maybe run Lacerate, Marigolds, and Crow's Eye, just to really mess with people, if you can actually copy spells. Because you play the Crow's Eyes, they're going to start row stacking, then your Marigolds and Lacerate, and good luck when all your units are on one row coming back from that. But that's about it, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Till then, have a good one.